Matt, you feeling good? I'm feeling good. I'm hydrated now. Oh, good. Me too. I'm hydrated with my spin thrift. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, folks. Welcome to the uh, Matt and Mike show, film photography podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about the Ilford ULF ultra large format special order for ortho film. I'm getting deja vu. Yeah, yeah. I never knew that there was a second special order just for ortho. Matt informed me that there is. Great. Uh, we're going to be briefly hitting on some topics, which I guess we'll flush out in the future, but we're going to be talking about FPP Color 125, Ooh, now classic. available in 120 and 620. Very briefly, FPP 126 film, really fast, because I'm going to save that for a show I do with Owen. What show? FPP Dracula, a.k.a. Sfema FN64. You know, you didn't you didn't even know this, Matt, but we'll save it. 120 and 4x5. It's super amazing. That's great. And uh, what's going to be FPP's next monster? Okay, we'll save that. Ooh. And uh, let's get right into uh, ULF, that it's ortho film. We have till August 30th, 2024, for, you know, FPP customers to get their orders in, in various sizes. Like, for mm -hmm. example, folks, 10 by 12, 9 by 12, 13 by 18, 18 by 24, 12 by 20, 4.75 by 6.5, 4 by 10, oh. 14 mm -hmm. by 17, 20 by 24. Strangely enough, 4 by 5, because... That is already available regularly. It's not really regularly available. Yeah, people have to no. bulk it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Eight by ten, mm -hmm. sixteen by twenty, and then twenty inches by fifty feet. Wow, that's that is funky stuff. Fifty point eight centimeters by thirty meters. Uh oh, I have to get my ruler out. Like, like yeah, I'm not even heck? calculating. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my brain around what what that goes in. Yep. <laughs> But that's great. Uh, you know, what is orthofilm? What's so special about it? Mm -hmm. And why is this special? So on the FPP, if you've been listening for any amount of time and you've seen me on, I'm probably ranting about the expense of shooting with large format. You know, I love large format. It's it's fun. It's challenging. And there's so many things that go into it. And a lot of it's like, you know, beefing up your skill base because there's so many like small little technical things that don't exist in your roll film camera. And that can, you know, either excite people or really throw them off and, you know, turn them off of shooting large format because you got to like load stuff in the dark and you're handling all this different, uh, handling all this different stuff. And it's just a completely weird workflow as opposed to shooting with like traditional roll films. And one of the best ways to learn it hands on is if you have some like dummy film, some film that's already been exposed or even better yet, have some live film that you can load underneath like underneath some sort of light and in the past i'd recommend recommended a lot of using x-ray film which is also an orthochromatic film now ilford also makes ortho film there's a handful of manufacturers that still make kind of like photographic grade orthochromatic film so for folks at home ortho uh, orthochromatic film is film that does not see any red there's like a hard cutoff at the red portion of the spectrum. So it sees uh, it sees blue and green. Some ortho films don't see green, some do, and depending on how that ortho is made is going to dictate the amount of, you know, ASA or speed that it's going to have. Ilford ortho is kind of like it's kind of that sweet spot in the middle where it's an 80 ISO or 80 ASA film that you can load into a huge variety of cameras and get a really cool look. So say you have like a really vintage folder that took like funky size films, you can breathe some new life into that by loading this film. And it's not going to be too much faster than kind of the fastest films available when that camera was made. So you can kind of work with those older materials. But getting back to what it's really good at is you can load it underneath a weak red safe light. So if you get a dedicated red safe light, one that's like either incandescent, I think, does the FPP soar uh, still sell those uh, little red junior bulbs? Seven watt. Perfect. That's the perfect size. So you can go to filmphotographystore.com and get those little Kodak junior bulbs. Yep. And those will do the trick. There are some LED lights. What you're looking for are like fixed or narrow spectrum LEDs, so LEDs that literally only show red. There are some LEDs that are like color changing that kind of work, but you have to be careful, uh, essentially. And, you know, this doesn't mean shine it red. Like if the film's here, the light can't be right here. You have to have quite a few feet of distance between them. You probably want to have a meter and a half of distance or, you know, four or five feet of distance between yourself and with the film 
and your your safe light, but you can still work with it. You can still see what's going on. So you can watch as that film goes into the holder, make sure you're doing it right. And you can even do this really, really interesting thing called developing by inspection, where you've got that weak red light on and you can actually watch your image emerge in the develop your well, your negative image emerge in the developer as it's going. This is something that you really don't ever get to see on the film side of things. With printing, you're always working under a safe light. Um, so if you're a darkroom printer, you're someone that has a photographic darkroom and you have red safe lights, you have to make sure that those safe lights will be good for orthochromatic film, but you can, you can make it work. And the other great thing about this is Ilford isn't just order, uh, offering this order in the funky film sizes. Like Mike mentioned, it's also available in kind of the standard, like the, the go-to large format sizes, 4x5, 5x7, and 8x10. So this is a great film stock to have around for more comprehensive testing if you're learning a new camera or process. And it's also just a really cool vintage look. If you take an ortho film and you don't have a filter on it and you shoot some photographs outside, it's going to look like you shot that photograph 100, 150 years ago because the sky is going to go that kind of that that bleach white. You're not really going to get separation there. Uh, some of your some of your like oranges and reds are going to deepen in tone and uh, working indoors can be a little sketchy depending on what type of light source you're working with, but it just has that kind of vintagey look. But the other nice thing about Ilford Ortho is it's a it's a photographic intended film. It's not like you're messing with stuff that um, was was known as like a process film. So it's got protective layers on it. It's really easy to work with. It's designed to work as a photographer would work with it. All those other things that I've talked about on the show, like X-ray film or messing around with like certain papers, those don't hold up to process as much as like a regular film does. So the balance is it's easy to work with, but it's, you know, maybe a, a little bit more expensive than some of these like really funky alternative methods. Folks watching or listening have any interest in this, you can go to filmphotographystore.com and, you know, the top, one of the top banners will be a link right to where you'll see a drop down of all, all the ortho mm -hmm. ultra large format special orders. I think that, you know, I, I think Mike, we got a couple emails right after the regular ULF window. Cause there were some people that were kind of like late to the party. Yep. Well, well, you're not late to the party now. So if you had an order that you wanted for the standard ULF, well, you can get some ortho in the, the size you want. And it's kind of nice. Ilford's given us uh, kind of an extra month on top yep. of the uh, the normal ULF windows we have till end of August, which means you know people can uh, get back into get back into their their fall or get ready for fall, and then order their stuff. So and uh, delivery times in the past on this have been around the same time as the as the ULF, maybe a little bit after. So you can expect this stuff, you know, in in the winter. Folks should know that that minimums are required. So if the the world order doesn't the world order if the world order <laughs> doesn't meet the minimum uh then you know an order can be canceled you know if you're hoping to get that really 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 weird size that maybe ilford hasn't made before be prepared to order more than a roll or a box of the stuff yep. it's it's going to be a little bit more but for the stuff that's you know pretty popular we you know um, me and mike went through uh the ulf orders uh, from this most recent round. And there was a lot of like the kind of like popular ULF sizes in there, but there's sometimes there's really, really funky ones. And the yeah. best we can say is we're going to, we're going to try to make those orders happen. Um, sometimes it means ordering an extra one or two things on FPP side. And sometimes it requires an extra way more than that, which we can't do. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, podcast at film photography project.com. If you have uh any questions, we'll take a quick break and we'll come back. We'll talk about the rest of our uh, exciting news. Eastman Kodak Company is happy to bring you America's favorite family, the Nelsons, Ozzy, Harriet, David, and Ricky. They enjoy good times together. And like most of us, they enjoy good times over again in pictures. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, good times are twice the fun when they come home with you. Save your fun in pictures, cause fun's more fun when you do. Fun in pictures, cause fun's more fun when you do. 
if you are not already taking lots of indoor pictures, why not get started this week? Tomorrow, get some flash bulbs and several rolls of Kodak film. Save your fun in pictures, cause fun's more fun when you do. Remember, your surest way to better pictures is to insist on the name Kodak. And now Kodak invites you to enjoy The Adventures of Ozzie and Harry. Hey, we're back. So FPP Color 125 in 120 and 620. Yes. This is... So Color 125 and 120, there was like a brief... There was like a, a beta test batch pre-pandemic mm -hmm. in 2019. Uh, did you get a roll back then, Matt? Um, I didn't. I think I think I gave my would be rolls to uh, to Mark and John. Okay, but they were they were doing some cool stuff with it. Uh, Trev Lee from the Darkroom dot com got a roll, and he did some initial tests with it, and they are amazing. It's a very unique color film. This is the film that originally, I mean, years ago. I mean, this film in thirty five millimeter has been with the FPP back from Forever. when we used to, we used to call it Sfema color. Yeah. 2013? Jeez. Yeah. We have to go to the Wayback Machine. <laughs> oh, man. But the what I love about this color palette, Mike, is it's like, it's everything film shooters ask for in like a new Kodak stock. It's just, but it's just there, you know? Yeah. Um, anytime I hear somebody talking about, oh, what's going to the next like portrait? What's the next Kodak thing going to be? It's like, it's already here. Yep. F color 125. And it's that really sweet spot medium of film. Yeah. Um, you know, my my go to favorite is still Portra One Sixty. You know, I'm I feel like a Kodak girly all, every time I talk about that. But like, FPP Color One Twenty Five is right in that sweet spot. It's not too fast for older cameras. Older cameras are going to have an awesome look because you have like those, uh, those kind of different hues that are really really saturated. That that soft lens is going to like bloom out and soften even more. There's a little bit of tooth. You know, there's a little bit of grain and crunch to the images. But I just love what it does to like those those more like cyan greens, yeah, and just those like ruby reds. Ah, it's a real, real gorgeous emulsion. This is the only availability of this film in North America. How much? <laughs> uh, currently, currently one twenty is twelve ninety nine. Oh, that's not bad. It's not bad, but compared to one twenty, just I mean, a big quick snapshot, folks. Like, yeah. Like I don't know if everyone out there knows this, but there's currently like a glut of 120 film on the market, and prices have been continually coming down on 120 film. So if you go to fppstore.com, you'll see, you'll see like Ektar and a, a bunch of other emulsions that are under ten dollars. So twelve ninety nine is a premium price. This the suggested retail price is fourteen ninety nine, but Matt, Ooh. I can't do it. Now fifteen bucks. So. Yeah, I, I can't do it. So uh, it's twelve ninety nine, six twenty because the specialty of the spool is eighteen ninety nine. But once again, if you do your Google Google search for six twenty color film, and there's a lot of re re rolled Ektar portrait mm -hmm. one one sixty. I mean, we offer it ourselves. We take existing stocks, put it on a, a six twenty spool. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go to B and H Photo, you'll see it's twenty twenty seven forty nine. Uh. for 620 color film so this is the first time that we've offered it so widely yeah i mean this stuff's it's this stuff is not hand rolled it's boxed it's factory sealed it's factory produced that's that's pretty sweet that's sweet yeah sweet yeah and it's it's just that different color like you it's a it is a truly different film it's it's not going to feel like i can't name a film that is in production that looks like this, except maybe, maybe like really, really well color graded uh, FPP Sun. Yeah, you know, that that funky motion. I think the funky motion picture film, when you take out the blue, is so close to this, but they're still different. You know, yep. they've got their different quirks and characteristics. And wow, I'm just like trying to wrap my head around like how much better this is going to look. So another th unique thing, folks, if you haven't worked with a film throughout different formats, it it does change a little bit. The qualities, um, like the base qualities are still there, but like there is a unique shift when you go from something in 35 millimeter 
to 120 and then even to large format if possible. Like some things that you didn't like in the smaller size are gone because you're not enlarging the picture as much. And some things just look a little bit different because it's it's smoothing it out. You've got more surface area to capture that. So I'm really excited about this, Mike. Are, is this going to be uh, one roll? Is, is it going to be available as like pro packs or anything? Or are we just doing one for now? Individually boxed rolls. Okay, cool. Yeah. Literally everyone I know is their favorite film. All the FPP folks, Dalzell, mm-hmm. Leslie Lazenby, uh, Trev Lee from thedarkroom.com is a huge fan. And I think that people are kind of going to discover it and be kind of like blown away. It is available. It's available now. So, you know, please do check it out. Is the, Do we still have debonairs? Yeah. Perfect debonair pairing. <laughs> there it is. I didn't even think about that. I yeah. didn't even think about that. Slap some debonair kits together because that's like, it's a match made in heaven. The FPP, we bought a warehouse full of debonairs back in the day. <laughs> yeah, a literal warehouse. Like this is like a it was like debonair for folks who don't know. Basically, it's 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 like a faux Holga. Like it's different. The frame it the is. frame is different. different. Yeah, it's different, but it's the same kind of plastic. Yeah, fantastic. Not, not quite Diana, not quite Holga, somewhere yeah. in between. So, I mean, throughout the years, the FPP we get tipped off like, oh, hey, you know, there's this warehouse full of, like, it was in Hong Kong. Clearly, they were made sometime probably in the eighties. Mm-hmm. They don't really, they're not on the radar anywhere. It's not like the Debonair, like the uh, Imperial Camera Company of Chicago, Illinois. This is different. Yeah. This is a Hong Kong camera. And FPP bought them all. And throughout our, our FPP history, there have been like little pockets of time where like we talk about the Debonair and it's popular. And then it just gets completely forgotten about. But yeah, they're still there. And I wow. wouldn't even thought of it. <laughs> color 125 and a debonair it sounds like a kit to me matt yeah that's that's the kit i'm going to yep. keep recommending it until until debonairs are gone <laughs> i think i think we have a winner here and the debonairs i don't know what they're currently selling for i'm guessing because we have so many the price is going to go down again that's great that's i great. think they're 29.99 which in a, in of itself in 2024 is a great price considering a whole goes what everything else 40 or 50 bucks yeah they're 40 50 unless you get to use one yeah. All right. Great idea. I d- <laughs> That's the idea of the day. Nice. Some other big news this summer, although you're not going to see this till the fall, is our FP- FPP Dracula film, which which is Sfema FN64 film. Mm-hmm. It's a wonderful emulsion. We've carried it forever. Drac has been amazingly popular. So the Film Photography Project, we have a series of monster-themed films which sounds insane, yeah. but Matt, they are so popular. They're That's so, so great. popular. <laughs> There's Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, the Mummy, amazing. So Dracula, which is a Sfema emulsion, that's the that's the oldest one. We put that on 2019. I remember Matt, everyone being amused by the concept at the uh, PDN Photo Expo. Yep, you you and I were at. It's kind of laughed at because it's like a novelty. But the thing is, folks, it took off. The film itself, there's nothing. There's no novelty aspect of the actual film. The actual film is so good, Dracula, that we're now going to be offering it limited edition, one twenty, and a limited number of four by five. Which Matt, you you yes. got a pack? Yes, I'm testing it right now. Some initial thoughts on it. So it's definitely like. You know, whenever you scale up to something like four by five, you know that it's we're 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 so many niches down that it's this is boutique. This is some hand cut film. And so if folks at home have tried some of the other really specialty FPP four by five emulsions, like the FPP four by five infrared, that this is gonna feel very similar to that. So it's a sheet. It's uh that's a little bit thinner than like your standard sheets. I think it might be the thinnest of the the monster emulsions so far uh, so far because like uh, Mummy and Frankenstein felt real good. They were just kind of like standard films. So this stuff's a little bit thinner, but uh fits you know fits all on the holders, no problem. And 
it's it's just a really really nice tight grain film like i already like the look of dracula in 35 it was one of my go-to recommendations if somebody didn't want to like spring for t-max or something really expensive for sharp this was a really good alternative like dracula just has a really nice grain and baked in contrast to it and bringing that to four by five again just magnifies all of the all of the good stuff and even if you are like a you know a pixel peeper grain gazer you know you just like zoom into everything it's still going to look so 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 smooth uh if you're doing like big scans or you're doing contact prints or enlargements it's i think it's going to be another uh another favorite uh especially because like in the in the large format stuff it's already on a tripod people just want like different stuff i think the monster film series is just like it might be the best thing to come out of fpp <laughs> So FPP's next monster, this will will fall in the fall, probably September, Ooh. is going to be Jekyll Hyde. Ooh, Jack! Wait, okay, hold on. I, I don't know anything about this, folks. Like this is this is my first time hearing about it. All right, so Jekyll and Hyde. Does that mean it's a film that can be used as a positive? Uh, can be developed as slide or negative? Oh, that's very interesting. I never <laughs> thought of that. We will <laughs> we will have to do. Ooh. Some reversal tests. The emulsion <laughs> for Jekyll Hyde, it's going to be one of our Derev pan emulsions. Oh, okay. and, the, and the reason being is that, you see, the monster films, they get put out nationally. They get a box. They get a UPC code. So they go out wide. B&H carries them. Whereas a, a lot of the, uh, you know, quieter emulsions, they only reside and are only available in the FPP online store. So as okay. of right now, only Derev Pan 400 is available nationwide and in small stores. You know, Dodd's Camera, Huddle mm -hmm. Camera, B&H, Adorama. So there's also a Derev Pan 100 ISO and a Derev Pan 200 ISO. One of those emulsions is going to be the Jekyll Hyde. We will be uh, have more information about that in the near future. Sweet. Uh, hold on one second. I, I hear John Fidelli. Will you guys shut up? <laughs> <laughs> it's john here he's working in the nice. school camera donation program excellent but they're in the kitchen area and like it's just like a huge echo they just start mm -hmm. talking loud which they were now i'm talking soft <laughs> time to wake this show up i mean we want to hear from you folks podcast at film photography project.com what are you doing this summer uh i'm not sure of our summer schedule we do have a a, a camera giveaway that we announced months ago Ooh. on the uh the Dal Dalzell Fidelli Rasso show. <laughs> but uh, we have to get the, the Jersey gang back together to do that giveaway. And uh, that'll be coming up very soon. That's all I got, Matt. No, this is great. I'm excited to uh, help folks get some ULF films, even if it's uh, even if it's the ortho. And I am really excited to try this larger uh, FPP color because yep. I'm feeling something different. And uh, yeah, we'll see you folks. All right, see ya.